I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at East Silicon with Dennis Dudek, who's going to talk today about TCAM. Dennis, what is TCAM? TCAM is a specialized form of memory used in networking applications. A TCAM is capable of searching uh, the whole array and presenting the address location of the data that you're presenting to it. Uh, unlike an SRAM, you would present the address to it and you get the data at that location. What's the advantage of TCAM versus a different kind of memory? A TCAM will give you the result location of the data in one clock cycle. You could perform the same function using an SRAM, however, it would take multiple cycles and algorithms to get you the same result, and it slows down the networking switching applications. Okay, why don't you draw this out for us? So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a high-level block diagram of a TCAM where you have the mask and data keys up top being presented to the TCAM array. And in this case, it's a 512 by 160 TCAM we're gonna talk about today. On the left, you see the periphery down the left side. The address clock and match ins are down the left side. And on the right, you'll see the result match outs or priority encoder, is, which is a result of the search that you're presenting. Now, each one of the bits inside this array comprised of two storage elements. And the reason for the two storage elements is it's a ternary cam, which means there's three states. Because there's two storage elements in the bit cell, it makes a TCAM very large in area on the die. Uh, another challenge to the TCAM is when you do a search, it comes down and searches every single one of these entries in here in one single clock cycle. An SRAM will do just the opposite and go get the data in one entry. So power is a serious concern when you're using a TCAM on a die. So power is really important. What can be done to reduce that power? There is a unique feature in the TCAM. We take the TCAM and we separate it into a primary and a secondary array. And in this case, it's 160 bits wide. And we position this partition at a fixed point during the compiler generation. In this example, we'll partition this TCAM at the 40th bit position of 160 bits wide. What's going to happen is, the search key is going to be presented from the top, and on the first clock cycle, it's going to search only the primary portion of this TCAM array. Now, if the primary portion matches any one of these match outs, these match outs are fed into the secondary portion of this TCAM key coming in, and on the second cycle, you'll see here is where the rest of the TCAM results are computed. What happens then is the resultant match outs come in or goes into the priority encoder. Simultaneously, while well, this secondary position or partition is being searched, the next word is coming in. So you don't lose any throughput on this particular architecture. You just gain one cycle of latency being added. And the latency or bringing these secondary partitions in is we have a set of latches up here that will pipeline it in one cycle so to do this in uh, the proper sequence. So one of the things that we've seen happening in a lot of architectures these days is people are trying to improve efficiency of what's already there. This is a way of really moving that forward, right? That is correct. This will result in a significant power reduction. And in this particular example here, you can realize up to 40 to 45 percent savings in power, depending on the number of matching entries in the first partition. Does it improve performance as well? Is, can that be traded off one to the other? Performance is not impacted with or without this feature. This was done to save power. Can you reduce the area? That's one of the other key parts of PPA here. You can reduce area minutely by going into the circuitry and reducing transistor sizes at the cost of performance. So how much can you actually shave off? You can shave off up to at least 30% of the area of leakage and power, depending on the size of these arrays, and I'll show you why. If I take and erase this previous example here, okay, and take these latches out, this dual architecture again works on splitting the array in half. Okay? And what's going to happen here is this becomes TCAM A and TCAM B. They're two independent TCAMs, and what we do here is we take another set of match out lines from the set from the first TCAM. What's going to be done here is 
we're taking this periphery here you see outside, and it's not the scale, but it gives you an idea of the scale. This periphery is going to be shared between this TCAM and this TCAM. If we didn't do this, you would have to take this TCAM, move it over here, and add the additional periphery in there. And that's how the savings is realized up to 30% of area and power and leakage. This particular architecture has two independent TCAMs and two independent search keys. And this is very useful when you have multi-width search up macros where you want 80, 160, 320, or 640-bit um, keys. And in this particular case, you end up with two 80-bit independent TCAMs sharing one set of periphery. That's how we realize the savings in area. So when you're working with TCAM, what do you typically start out with? What's, what's standard there? The standard would be the bit cell from the foundries is where the building block is, and that defines the pretty much the overall dimension and pitches of your TCAM. So what are we looking at here? Well, you're looking at a set of waveforms of another way we reduce power in our TCAMs. The TCAM basically has three functions, a write, read, and a search or compare. And the slowest of the three is what defines your performance of the TCAM. So in our TCAMs, we had to beef up the read and write circuitry to keep up with the search circuitry in our specs. And in doing so, it makes your area and power in the, in the TCAM be much larger. So if you look at this waveform in this clock cycle here, every clock cycle, there's a write being performed. One, two, three, four. And it's done in a single cycle write. And the read is the same way, but I'll just focus on the write today. What we've done is we came in here and reduced the read and write circuitry, okay? And we said, let's do a read or write in two cycles. So if you look at the bottom, we're doing a right here and a right here. So you're doing two writes versus four. The advantage of doing this is we're able to reduce the circuitry, as I said, and not worry about the performance of the read and write, keeping up to the search performance. Okay. So during this write, this would be a don't care, and that would be a don't care, and you end up with two writes in these two cycles. The search is still done on a cycle by cycle basis, and that is not affected whatsoever in any way form. So if you're looking at uh, building a solution for networking, where's your starting point? What are you thinking about first, and what are some of your concerns? You're thinking about the granularity of your macro you want to build. If you want a granularity of 80, you would build with an 80-bit YT cam. You may want to start with 40. Uh, the smaller granularity, the more power you end up picking up an area. But anyway, a typical TCAM would have an 80-bit granularity, and you would probably want to use the partial pipeline search option to reduce some of that uh, power and area along with the dual TCAM. And so what are some of your trade-offs here in terms of what you're thinking about? Do you always want the fastest speed? Is that the, the key? Is it power? Is it um, area? What, where does all this stuff enter in? Because when you think about networking, you tend to think about we don't really have to worry about the the size of these things. We don't have to worry necessarily even about the cost of these things. One of the trade-offs is, is the primary concern is, is performance. Uh, they may want a particular speed, like 1.2 gigahertz. Well, you can't go and build a 1K TCAM and expect 1.2 gigahertz. So you probably end up reducing it down to a 512 word entry or a 256 entry. But every time you reduce it, you keep increasing your power in area. And you've got to keep going back to the features to get back to where you started. So what kind of metrics are you working with here? So you think about a data center and the amount of data that they have to process. What's key for them? Key would be to put the biggest or largest amount of TCAM you can on that chip at the lowest power and smallest area possible is the bottom line. So you can never have too much memory is what it comes down to, right? No. Usually power is the limiter in area. Dennis Dudek, thank you very much for a great explanation. Thank you.